Nation, even I am not immune from the silly band trend. For crying out loud, it's a fucking battle axe. Yeah, it looks wimpy and limpy and has hair all over it, but the fuck with it. It's fucking badass. It's cool as shit. And not to mention, it's kind of like foreshadowing. And this beer, well, this beer isn't exactly European, but it's beer. But these two things make me think about... Well, it makes me think about Viking metal. It makes me think about black metal. It makes me think about Viking black metal. However, that's not exactly what you get with Enslaved. Yeah, Enslaved has a new disc that was just released this past Tuesday here in America called Exo... Uh, let me try that again. Exomia Ethica Ordine. And I know that I probably just bastardized that to hell. And you know what? At this point, I bastardized everything to hell. I understand that my dialect sucks. I understand that I don't understand half of the shit that I say. And I also understand that I can't say half the shit that I say. Why do I still say it? Because that's just how I am. Let's face it. I'm an amazing man with an amazing talent for fucking things up. But at any rate, Enslaved has been a band that's been around for quite some time, actually since the beginning of the 1990s. They started off as more of a traditional black metal band and have slowly and steadily evolved their style to incorporate more of a progressive edge. And the 2000s have actually been a very lucrative time for this particular band. And it's very safe to see that this direction was coming with Enslaved. You could see with early albums such as Frost, where they had that traditional black metal style. But as you cycled through a little bit more and got to uh, albums such as Monumention, and then you get to Below the Lights, and finally with Isa, you really see that corner turn, and you really see a lot more of a progressive element uh, being incorporated into their music. Now, the last two albums that they had, of course, were Run and Vertebra, and both of these were incredibly, incredibly good albums. These are albums that I definitely like to play a lot. Although, I must say, Mon, you mentioned in Below the Light still remain to be my favorites, but it's for a little bit more of a personal reason. Below the Lights was actually the first enslaved album that I sampled, which really got me knee-deep in love with this band. And Mon, you mentioned is probably the album that I love from them the most, because it is really just the most experimental for the time. I I say for the time because this is a band that continues to experiment and continues to further develop their sound to incorporate even more uh, differences and even more uh, things that, well, you just would not expect from a band particularly of this magnitude. Uh, now, of course, like all albums uh, by Enslaved, you have a very, very unique concept. Uh, Monumention, of course, had uh, just a very unique astral plane looking type style thing. And right now you have what would appear to be a portal that has a man uh, kind of looking rather downtrodden in the midst of it. And you see that same portal in the back. And whenever you open it up, look at this very unique little picture. I understand it's very difficult to see. I know that my Opeth uh, reviews didn't exactly have the best photo quality. Uh, however, for what it's worth, it is for what it's worth. What's really nice about this is that whenever you take a look in here, whenever you read through everything, the one thing that you're going to notice is that even though there are some things in here that you can't understand, such as Ethica, Ordine, Radho, and the like, all of the lyrics that you're going to read here, for the most part, I would say 95% of the time here, are going to be in English. This is something that's very unique, something that Enslaved has done a couple times before. However, this is the one point in which I really noticed it the most. Is it because it's a translation affair, or is it because this is the way that they're writing? Hard to tell. Do I really need to describe Enslaved sound to you? Well, yes, I kind of do, because they've been building upon the sound that I mentioned prior all the way up until this point. With albums such as Below the Lights, you first heard the uh, real transparency uh, of their sides from black metal to progressive metal, and blending them together in a blender to make this sort of sonic brew that's very pleasing to uh, fans of both genres. This is actually what you could be cons uh, what you consider to be a, a real cross-genre band that could really get fans from both sides together and excited about uh, perhaps them coming to town or releasing this new record. So whenever this record's released, you're not only getting a lot of black metal fans that are interested in this, there are some progressive metal fans that are all also clamoring to this work, wondering exactly what direction they are going to take. However, the incorporation has been sort of subtle and uh, in, imprinted in very uh, various ways uh, throughout the 2000s, especially. Uh, you hear it a lot when Below the Lights, especially uh, on track number three, 
uh, whenever you get into ISA, you just hear some of the repetitive motions, which is a little bit more uh, constitutional of black metal. However, you hear rehashing or reprising, which is something that you hear a lot in progressive metal as well. And then on run and vertebra, you just hear the sound really build from the black metal to incorporate a little bit more of the progressive, more proggy side. It's just almost obvious to a well-trained listener. Now, with Axoma Eth uh, Ethica Ordini, this is an album that really just comes out with it. Uh, there's something that a lot of people might say is that the progression that I speak about regarding this band is not something they just come out with. This is the out. This is, if, if, if you want to compare it to anything, this is like a coming out party where Enslaved says, listen, we're a black metal band. We incorporate progressive into our music. We don't give a fuck. This is who we are. Deal with it. Because this album definitely has their black metal, their Viking metal heritage, but it also incorporates that progression. It incorporates that repetition. It incorporates that good musicianship. It incorporates instrumentalization as well as beautifully laced vocals, both deathy and clean. Now, of course, the clean vocals aren't something that we're all that unfamiliar with with Enslaved. However, this is an album where they are very prevalent. And that's actually a positive thing, because they have a very, very strong uh, clean vocal core. And as far as the instrumentalization is concerned, it's always been solid. This is something that needs no explanation and absolutely needs no introduction. It's a nine-track album, and I gotta say, there is actually a seven-inch copy, or a seven-inch uh, vinyl that has two bonus tracks. I don't have it, obviously. Uh, however, gotta love what I do have. Gotta respect what I do have. I'm only further enthralled by this particular band. With tracks such as The Closer Lightning, which really just enthralled me to the point last night where, even though I was about to drift to sleep, because it was, let's face it, seven in the morning, I just, I stood up at attention. I had to listen to this track again and again. And I've been listening to the album almost on repeat ever since, uh, along with Seer Bliss, which is a band that I posted about on Facebook uh, just a day or so ago. If you uh, don't know who that is, definitely check them out. In closing, Enslaved's 2010 album is something of a paradox in the fact that it is a coming out party, but at the same time, for a fan like me, this is not something that I necessarily did not know. This is not new information to me, however it may be to a lot of people. You never know. I don't know. Maybe to you, they've always been a black metal band. Maybe to you, they've always been a Viking metal band with little infusions of progressive, but never really something that really deserves progressive being right there in the name. However, with this particular album... Progression must be placed in the title because it's definitely there. You can definitely sense its presence from the first track to the last. Not to mention, it is very exquisitely done, and that is what makes this a great record. They're able to fuse the two together on a nice 50-50 balance as far as, uh, you know, tolerance is concerned, so to speak. They make the mend happen. Am I saying this is the best enslaved record? I'm not sure. That's going to be really, really difficult for me to uh, really put a, uh, a, a pulse on. This is something where I have to re-listen to the entire discography one by one by one by one by one, and then maybe do it again and again, and then really just feel, uh, formulate my opinion. But for right now, I will say, for 2010, it shifted up everything a little bit more, because this is one more good album that is being placed on the table for Album of the Year whenever it comes to December, and this is a band where we could even raise our silly band hammers high, because Enslaved has definitely produced a gem here in 2010. Gotta give it a nice solid 9 out of 10. I know I typically don't give rankings anymore, but this one deserves it. This one deserves a number. This one gets a number. Hi, Enslaved! And be sure to see them on tour here in America with uh, Dawn of Ash, Dawn of Ashes, should I say, uh, and Demi Borgir and Blood Red Throne. I know, Blood Red Throne, bleh. See it for fucking enslaved.